the possibility of rethinking uh, uh, Islamic political thought and indeed even rethinking the Sharia seems to me to be very important. And there I'm in, in complete agreement uh, with you. And I, I, I believe that this is something which is already beginning to, to happen uh, in various ways, even within uh, the Middle East itself. The possibility that uh, certain aspects of what people immediately think of as the Sharia uh, can be uh, changed actually has already been done, as we know. Um, if you think about uh, the abolition of slavery, uh, which used to be taken for granted uh, uh, even in the Sharia in the Middle Ages, uh, there is now no country, uh, no Muslim country, which officially accepts slavery. Uh, and this has had to be rethought, and this has had to be uh, conceded as something which goes against, uh, as it were, moral uh, bases. But uh, there is a more general point, and I think it's an interesting point, and that is uh, clearly the Sharia itself may have certain um, problems about, uh, which, uh, about principles that may conflict with the notion of human rights, particularly the notion of equality, for example. We know that although there are many, many good things about the Sharia, and by the way, I like your reference to the fact that people think that somehow the Sharia is, is, is virtually you know, nothing but uh, stoning adulteresses and uh, cutting off hands, whereas in fact there's a lot in the Sharia which, which is consistent with, uh, with many of the, of the principles of, the, uh, uh, of human rights. Nevertheless, there is something also about the Sharia which ought, to, in my view, also to be further uh, explored, and I don't know whether you would agree with that, and, and that's beyond the question of maqasid, uh, the question of ahliyat uh, al-wujub, that is of, of a certain legal capacity, which in an, in an important sense all uh, persons according to the Sharia, have. There is a kind of universal acceptance, and this is truly a universal principle, if you like, and that is that everybody, even those who are unequal, even men and women who, who have had uh, uh, conventionally and traditionally uh, inequality, nevertheless, they each have certain, uh, a certain legal capacity and certain, if you like, inalienable rights. They may not be equal rights in the way in which human rights thinks of them, but nevertheless they are uh, rights. And even now, that even now that we don't have slaves, uh, but even slaves had certain rights uh, and, and a master had to abide by those rights. And I think this is something which needs to, uh, you know, we could think a little, a little more about. But um, so there are various ways, and I do agree completely with you about the need for for rethinking, <coughs> and there are so many different uh, questions that arise in that context, which I'm sure you uh, want to expand on. But the separation of politics and, uh, or rather, a separation of the state and politics, a uh, state and religion, but not of religion and politics, as you point out. And that's interesting, and, and in a way, it, it seems to me suggestive. Uh, to make it possible for religious principles, religious beliefs, to come into the public sphere.